In this video, we're going to look at solving exponential equations. Now, we saw a couple of these a few videos ago when they were kind of very simple and basic. So we're going to see how complicated these guys get. But in all of it, here's what we need to remember. We need to remember that when we see an equation where you've got exponentials involved, as long as these guys right here have the same base. So if those guys have the same base, then that means that we can say that their powers are equal. So as long as we can rewrite our equation, rewrite each side of the equation to have the same base, then we can just set those powers equal to each other. Well, the cool thing about this is that this is an if and only if statement, so it goes both ways. Okay, so let's uh, run through a few examples here. Let's see what we can do. So for example, if we start off with 25 to the x is equal to 5 to the x plus 7. What we're trying to do is we're trying to rewrite this so that each side of the equation is, is the same base or has the same base. And so this is where if you go back to that power sheet that I gave you in one of the documents before, it's pretty simple. Just have that guy next to you and be able to see how these guys line up. So when I look at 25 and 5, I can see that these guys have a common base of 5. So I can rewrite this 25 to be 5 to the second power, and that is still raised to the x. And on the right side, 5 is just 5 raised to the x plus 7. And since we have powers to powers, right? As long as we have powers to powers, we can say that we multiply those powers. So this becomes 5 to the 2x when you multiply those guys is equal to 5 to the x plus 7. And since these guys have the same base, so we'll just make sure that we understand that these guys have the same base. That means that their powers must then be equal. So 2x has to equal x plus 7. And then once you have the powers, or once you have your variable no longer in the power, but down on the, like the normal level here, you just look at the equation that you have. And right now we see that we have an equation that is linear. We know how to solve linear equations. We just have to get x on one side, constants on the other side. So very simply, subtract x on both sides of the equation, we find out that x is equal to 7. And that's it. There is really nothing to these problems. As long as you can identify the common base, you're going to be fine. Now please understand I'm talking about a common base, not a common factor. That's something totally different. So the next example is 16 raised to the 3x minus 5 is equal to 8 raised to the 2x plus 9. And so if we look at these, you might think, oh, they have a common base of 4. Well, not, not really, at least not in a way that's going to be nice for us. Now, you can rewrite 16 to be 4 squared, but you can't rewrite 8 to be 4 to a power that's really nice and easy to work with. So we need to go a little bit smaller than that. Think about what these guys are made up of. So 16 is 4 squared, but it's also 2 to the 4th power. So this is 2 to the 4th, and 8 is a power of 2 because we can write that as 2 to the 3rd. Now, if you aren't sure about this, then off to the side, just make a, a little list of your powers. So 2 to the 1st is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the 3rd, just multiply times another 2, so you get 8. 2 to the 4th is 16. If we had to go to 2 to the 5th, 16 times 2 is 32. And these are just some really good numbers to know, to have memorized. That's going to help us out with a lot of these equations that we're going to uh, encounter. All right, so we can see that 8 is a power of 2, 16 is a power of 2. So we're going to rewrite these guys. So instead of writing 16, I'm going to write 
2 to the 4th, and this is raised to the 3x minus 5, and 8 gets rewritten as 2 to the 3rd, and it keeps that same power, 2x plus 9, like this. And, as we were just, just showing on the last problem, you have a power raised to a power, and you actually have it on both sides. So when you have a power to a power, you're going to multiply those guys using those properties of exponents. So the base is 2, 4 times 3x minus 5, think about having parentheses around that. So this becomes 2 raised to the 12x minus 20. On the other side of the equation, we have 2 and distribute the 3. 3 times 2x, so we get 6x. 3 times 9 is 27. So we raise powers to powers. We now have the same base for these guys. So they both have a base of 2. Just making sure that we understand that since they have the same base, that means that their powers must be equal. And this is all connected to the fact that exponentials, exponential functions are 1 to 1. And so now that we have this equation, it becomes a, a simple matter of can you solve this linear equation? And I hope at this point in the game, uh, the answer is yes, a very resounding yes. So I'm going to move my variables all to the same side. The easiest way is to subtract 6x on both sides, like that. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and move the constants to the other side. So I'm going to add 20 to move that over to the right side. So those guys reduce, the 6x's reduce, I'm left with 6x on the left, and I have 47 on the right, and then of course the final step is just to divide both sides by 6. Please do not be upset that you have an answer that's a fraction. No one ever said that we were only allowed to have nice, pretty looking numbers. Okay, So here, x is equal to 47 over 6. Now, in the next examples that we're going to come across, things are going to get a little bit dicier. We're going to start seeing radicals and fractions, but as long as we know how to work with our powers, we're going to be okay.